In this video, we're going to learn how to convert from pseudocode into an actual program. For this, I'm using a, a little algorithm that is present in one of the artificial intelligence books, textbooks that is very famous, uh, A Modern Approach. So let's analyze this and let's see how to turn this pseudocode here into an actual program on the other side. So the first thing to do with a pseudocode is to look at the code and debug at least one run. This tree search function right, assumes uh, a tree trying to find a specific node in a tree. That's, that's what it's about. So let's create a little tree. Let's say we have uh, here we have node 1 and that expands to node 2 and node 3. And let's say that node 2 expands to uh, four, five, and six. And let's say that node three expands to seven and eight. Let's say this is our tree. In computer science, this is a tree. And let's say that what we're looking for is a node six. Whatever it is, it's a node six. Okay? So let's look at uh, this tree search function. So first of all, it says that it takes a problem. Let's say this is the whole problem, okay? This is gonna be the problem, it's the whole tree, okay? For now. Now, what's gonna happen is that this is gonna return a solution or failure. Fine, we're gonna check that later. First thing it says, initialize the frontier with the initial state of the problem. So let's say the frontier is a list. We're gonna put we're gonna put right here f for frontier, and this is gonna be a list of things that I'm gonna put in here. Okay. And what's the initial state of the problem? Well, the way I see it here it could be this root node here. That's the initial state. So I'm gonna initialize it with the bubble for one, the node for one. Then we're gonna loop. The program says loop do, right? So this is some sort of loop. Uh, it doesn't have a condition here to stop, so it'll go forever. So it says, the first statement says, if the frontier is empty, so we check, is the frontier empty? No, it's not. So we don't care about the then, the then clause. Then we go to the next line, choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. So, oh, so we're calling states leaf nodes now because it says a leaf node from the frontier. And in the frontier, we only have states, right? initial state of the problem. So in this pseudocode, leaf node and state seem to be interchangeable. So we'll choose a leaf node from the frontier and remove it from the frontier. That's what that line says. So we're going to remove it. We're going to choose the only one we can choose and we're going to remove it. We're going to put it over here. Removed is not in the frontier anymore. The next line says if the node contains the goal state, which is basically what we're looking for, then do something. Well, it does not return, it does not contain the goal state, so we don't do anything. Then it says to expand the chosen node, expand the chosen node, so one expands into two and three. That's what it means by expand into two and three, right? And then adding the resulting nodes to the frontier. So we will add them here, two and three. All right, and then we don't need this anymore. Remember, this is in a loop do, so now we start over again. If the frontier is empty, well, it's not empty, it has two nodes. So we continue. Choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. Well, I can choose any node, but to be systematic, I can choose the first node all the time, right? So I will choose a leaf node, node number two, and remove it from the frontier. Remove it from the frontier, right? If the node that I just removed, node number two, contains a goal state, then I will do something, but it doesn't. Remember, our goal is in, number, in node six. So then I, I go to the next line. Expand the chosen node, expand node number two. It expands into four, five, and six, right? Expand the chosen node and then 
adding the resulting notes to the frontier. So we're going to add them to the frontier. Four, five, and six. So we've added them to the frontier. Good. Now we do not need this anymore, this graph anymore. And then because it's a loop do, I go at it again. If the frontier is empty, it's not empty. Choose a leaf node. In this, this case, we're going to choose node number three, right? Because that's the next one. That's the first one in the frontier. Okay. Choose number three right here. Does the node contain a goal? If the node contains a goal state, well, it doesn't, so I don't care about that if. Expand the chosen node, adding the resulting nodes to the frontier. So the number three expands into seven and eight. So I'm just going to directly add them to the frontier. Seven and eight. And I will add them to the frontier. Right now. Then again, loop do. If the frontier is empty, well, it's not empty. Choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. I'll choose node four, right? That's my leaf node that I'm going to choose. I'll remove it from the frontier, four. If the node contains a goal state, well, it does not contain a goal state, so I don't care about that if. It says expand, expand the chosen node. Ooh, four doesn't have any more expansions. So there's nothing that to add to the, to the frontier. So I just won't add anything to the frontier. That's it. I go again at loop do. If the frontier is empty, well, it's not empty. Choose a leaf node and remove it. I will choose node five, right? I will choose node five and um, take it out of there. Choose node five. I will take it out, node five, expand it. But it doesn't expand to anything, right? So there's nothing to add to the frontier. All right, loop do. Remember, we go back at it again. If the frontier is empty, well, it's not empty. Choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. I will choose node six now. Remove it from the frontier. And I will put it right here. Okay, then, I, then if the node contains a goal state, well, it does. Remember, the node six is where it contains what I'm looking for. If the node contains a goal state, which is true, then I will return the corresponding solution. So I'll return this node or the solution in this node, whatever it is that I'm looking for in this node. I will return this node. And remember, a return ends the, the function. So it's done, done with a tree search. If this tree had no solution, at some point, I would have explored and emptied all the nodes from the solution, from the frontier, I'm sorry, from the frontier. And at one point, I'm going to hit the if the frontier is empty, that will be yes. Then I'm going to return failure. And th then I know that I could not find my solution. So how do we turn this into a program now that we understand what it's doing? Well, the way we do it is, is, um, is like this. So here I'm going to have my little programming interface. And I'm just going to write the program. I'm not going to execute it, really. Uh, but let's, let's talk about this. I'm going to code it in Python. So to code in Python, it says function tree search, the first line. I'm going to go line by line, function tree search. So in order to define a function in Python, you do def, and then we call it tree search, tree search. Python usually likes underscore, so that's why I do it. And then it receives a problem, so let's call it problem, right? Now, it doesn't matter what it returns in Python, right? You don't put the return clause right there with the definition. Now, one thing that we need to identify really well is what to store and what are the actions, okay? So first, initialize frontier, which is going to be a list. Well, with the initial state of the problem. So one thing that I can do is do uh, frontier is a list with the initial state of the problem. So I can say uh, it's a list. Now I have to put the initial state of the problem here, right? 
And that is something that I have to do. What is the initial state of the problem? I have to get the initial state of the problem. So you can create a function. Let's make up a name. Initial state and then of the problem. So this will be my way of getting that initial state of that problem. Okay? Then I'm gonna do into I'm gonna go into an infinite loop. So one way of doing infinite loops in Python is to do this while true. Oops, while true. That's an infinite loop. Then I'm, I'm going to ask if, and then look, if the frontier is empty, I have to check whether the frontier is empty. How do I check? Remember, this is a list. How do I check whether a list is empty in Python? Well, one way that I can do it is to say if the length of frontier is less than one right or is equal to zero that means the frontier is empty then if that is the case then I'm going to return and then failure let's say failure is going to be the null value or the non value in Python let's continue the next line choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier so remember we're going to get the first node of the frontier so we can have node the leaf node leaf node equals frontier.pop that takes the first element of frontier and puts it into leaf node right another thing that we can do because this is this is uh, this is an action right to choose a leaf node we can say choose node and then we put frontier now, choose node does not exist in Python. It's a function that I have to make, and I will choose nodes however I want, right? So I will choose node from the frontier. Yeah, that's correct. And then what I'm going to do is if the chosen node is a goal state, right? So I'm going to check whether that leaf node is a goal state. So if goal state leaf node Right, so I'm going to check whether the leaf node is a goal state, right? Now, uh, usually the goal state is, it, well, I'm going to check if it's a goal state, right? If that is the case, then I'm going to return, okay, the leaf node. I'm going to return the leaf node. Now, if the leaf node was not a goal state, I will expand this node. So I'm going to get a little list uh, nodes. It's going to be expand leaf leaf node okay expand leaf node and then I'm gonna add the results to the frontier so then I'm gonna say frontier equals frontier plus nodes and this is my program it doesn't need any more actually it can be done in a lot less if you if you're um, if you're more proficient with Python. Now, there are many, this program doesn't do anything, right? There are many things that are, that are left undone. For example, how do we choose the initial state of the problem, right? Well, let's say the problem um, is an object, okay? And the, if the problem is an object, it might contain an initial state or a root node, right? So maybe you want to define, a, whoops, Maybe you want to define a function called initial state and you give it a problem object. And what it does is it returns a problem dot in its state or something like that, right? That can be your, your, uh, your uh, function there if it's an object, if the problem is an object, right? Another thing that, um, so that, that's one thing that you can do. If that is the case, then let's look at here. Choose node in the frontier. So for a frontier, right? Def choose node, and then we pass it a list, which we're going to call frontier. Well, what are we going to do with this uh, frontier? We can, for example, we can um, pop, right? So so element. Uh, this 
uh, return on tier.pop, for example. That will return the first element. If I wanted to get the last element, I could do some, I could code something to get, you know, always the last element. If I want to get a random element, I could code that in here in this choose node function. So now my functions here are small functions. It's gold state leaf node, uh, well, expand leaf node. So let's say gold state leaf node, okay? Let's, let's this just return um, frontier.pop. Now, here, this is interesting. Goal state, and then I want a leaf node. Now, how do I know what is my goal state? Well, if I'm using a problem object, perhaps problem has the goal state in it, and I want to see if the leaf node is the same as the is the same as the as the problem's goal state. But in this function, I'm not passing the problem. So maybe what I can do is add another parameter here where I do pass the problem and I compare. I say, um, this, is, this has to be Boolean, right? So because it's in an if, if goal state. So this should return a Boolean value. So I can say, return, oh, well, very soon. This is a common programming um, technique that is not good, but it goes like this. If leaf node equals equals problem whoops problem dot goal state then return true else return false right so we can do something like that now this is really bad programming if your condition is going to be true uh, if you're going to return true when the condition is true and false when the condition is false, then you just you might as well just return just return uh, the condition. So that's how I check my goal state, right? Now, how do I expand the leaf node? Well, I can create a function expand and then a node. I'm just going to not put leaf node is too long, and then I create my function to expand a node. And this one has to return a list because I'm, I'm adding it to this other list. So it's super important to have the data types clear and what is it that I want to store and what is it that I want to do. For example, expanding, checking for goal states, choosing a node. Those are things that I want to do and they will all become smaller functions. Okay. And then expand node. This is something that I will do. So then I will probably create my code to expand the node, right? And for that node, maybe this, it all depends on how, I'm, how I am structuring my, my tree. Maybe this is, uh, maybe each node has a list of nodes that are children of it, right? And maybe I can just look at that and return that. But this is basically the process by which you can convert this pseudocode into an actual program. It's... To recap, it's very literal from here to here. It's very much literal. And then what happens is that then you determine what's going to be an action and what's going to be a storage. The storage stays in the function and the actions become smaller functions, right? You, made up the, you make up those names and then they become smaller functions. And one of them might be more challenging than others, but you're on your way to coding with very small functions, a more complex algorithm.